Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. How about this? Star Trek real. Star Trek original. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Secretary of War Pete Hexith, along with several top Pentagon officials, has just held a special meeting with SpaceX's board of directors, and the location was Starbase itself. What they saw there clearly made an impact. A massive facility built for one purpose only, to manufacture and launch the largest rockets ever made on Earth. Even Pete Hegseth himself appeared genuinely impressed, openly praising Elon Musk and his bold vision of turning science fiction into reality. So, what exactly happened during that visit? And does this signal that SpaceX is becoming critically important to the future of the U.S. Department of Defense? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Just yesterday, the entire production site at Starbase was effectively shut down for the whole day, all just to prepare the site and welcome a high-level government delegation. More specifically, it was a visit from the U.S. Secretary of War Pete Hegseth, joined by several senior Pentagon officials. Also present was Texas Senator John Cornyn, a key figure who has long supported NASA funding and SpaceX contracts through congressional committees. The meeting itself took place inside the Star Factory, and as you can see, the setup was surprisingly minimal. But what really grabbed everyone's attention were six pristine Raptor 3 engines surrounding the stage, polished to perfection. SpaceX even used blue lighting to make them stand out. Right beside them sat a massive section of Starship, already fitted with ceramic heat shield tiles. Honestly, it was the perfect way to impress the guests, not with flashy decorations, but with the hardware itself. This meeting came just days after SpaceX secured a contract worth more than $739 million from the U.S. Space Force to launch missile tracking and early warning satellites. It also marked a key stop in the nationwide Arsenal of Freedom tour an initiative aimed at rebuilding and revitalizing America's defense industrial base. Elon Musk was the first to take the stage. He said it was an honor to welcome the delegation and briefly shared SpaceX's long-term vision to make Star Trek real, to make Starfleet and the Starfleet Academy real, so that space isn't always just science fiction, but something that eventually becomes science fact. And at the center of that vision, he said, are the massive Starship vehicles SpaceX is building right now. To some people, this might sound like the imagination of a grown-up kid dreaming big, but not to Pete Hegseth. By that point, Hegseth had already toured Starbase himself, walking through the Mega Bay assembly buildings and visiting the launch pads. So, when he stepped onto the stage, he openly thanked Elon Musk and voiced his full support for that vision. Throughout his speech, Hegseth repeatedly praised SpaceX, saying, Team, there's nothing like this in America. There's nothing like this in the world. He was pointing to the sheer scale and speed at which SpaceX went from nothing, from scratch, to building an entire fleet of Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Dragon, and now Starship. Something that, in his words, he had never seen at NASA, Blue Origin, Boeing, or Lockheed Martin. He went on to say that what SpaceX has built, and continues to build, is a living example of the American spirit of innovation proving that large-scale, high-speed manufacturing is still possible in the United States. In contrast, Hegseth criticized legacy defense contractors for spending decades chasing perfect systems. SpaceX, he argued, has shown that America needs a new playbook, one that moves faster, cuts through bureaucracy, and prioritizes innovation driven by private companies like SpaceX if the U.S. wants to maintain its technological edge. This also signals that, in 2026, the Department of Defense is heading toward a major internal overhaul, one clearly inspired by SpaceX. Starbase has become the most visible example of a fast-moving, reusable, low-bureaucracy production model that the trump Hegseth administration wants to apply across the entire U.S. defense system. And the first step is already taking shape, reducing reliance on slow, underperforming legacy contractors. The clearest example is Boeing and its troubled project to replace the next presidential aircraft, the VC-25B, better known as the new Air Force One. Back in 2018, Boeing signed a fixed-price contract worth $3.9 billion to convert two Boeing 747-8 aircraft into highly secure presidential jets, equipped with classified communications, missile defense systems, and protection against electromagnetic pulses. The company promised to deliver the first aircraft by 2024, 
But as of January 2026, the program has been repeatedly delayed, now pushed all the way to mid-2028. That's nearly four years behind the original schedule, with total costs ballooning to an estimated five to six billion dollars. The U.S. government, and President Trump in particular, has made its frustration very clear, repeatedly and publicly criticizing Boeing. The VC-25B program has increasingly come to symbolize everything the administration sees as wrong with legacy defense contractors, slow, inefficient, and wasteful. In contrast to Boeing, SpaceX has built a long and highly effective working relationship with the U.S. Department of Defense, now referred to as the Department of War, standing out for its rapid execution, lower costs, and high reliability. Since 2020, SpaceX has captured a dominant share of missions under the National Security Space Launch, or NSSL, program for the U.S. Space Force, securing contracts worth billions of dollars. Most notably, in early 2026, SpaceX was awarded a $739 million contract for nine critical national security satellite launches, scheduled to fly between late 2026 and 2028. Earlier, in 2025, SpaceX also won $714 million for five out of seven missions in Lane 2 of NSSL Phase 3. Thanks to launch prices that are roughly 30 to 50 percent lower than previous alternatives, SpaceX's total NSSL contract value has now pulled far ahead of its competitors. And the fact that this delegation chose to visit Starbase sends a clear signal. The partnership is no longer just about launching satellites on Falcon 9. There's something bigger on the table, and it almost certainly involves Starship. That message came through loud and clear in a recent post by Pete Hegseth on X, where he wrote, Starbase is a testament to the strength of American ingenuity and invention. Keep going, Elon Musk. Alongside the post were a series of photos, Hegseth standing with Elon Musk, the two shaking hands. Moments where Musk is seen explaining just how powerful the Raptor engine is and what kind of technology goes into it. There were also images of the delegation looking up in awe inside Mega Bay 2, where Ship 39 had just completed inspections and heat shield installation. It turns out there was a reason Ship 39 hadn't been rolled out to Massey's site for cryogenic testing yet. SpaceX intentionally kept it inside Mega Bay, giving the Pentagon delegation a first-hand, up-close look at just how massive this vehicle really is. And at that moment, it's hard to imagine no one asking the obvious question. What if Starship were adapted for military use? Because that idea has already been on the table for years. The most significant military application under study is the Rocket Cargo, or Point-to-Point -point Delivery Program, led by the U.S. Space Force, AFRL, and U.S. Transcom since 2021. The concept is simple but radical, using large, reusable rockets like Starship to transport 30 to 100 tons of cargo, or even personnel, to anywhere on Earth in under one hour via suborbital flight. This capability would be game-changing in high-intensity conflicts, especially in regions like the Indo-Pacific. It enables rapid resupply, emergency logistics, cargo airdrops, or even direct support to naval forces, without relying on slow and vulnerable sea or air routes. SpaceX has already received research contracts for this program, roughly $102 million starting in 2022, with additional funding allocated in fiscal year 2025 and fiscal year 2026. And Starship stands out as the leading candidate, thanks to its massive payload capacity, precise vertical landing capability, and full reusability. Imagine a Starship variant without a heat shield, because it wouldn't need to reach orbit or perform a full re-entry. Instead, it would fly suborbitally around the planet, still equipped with its aerodynamic flaps and landing legs, capable of touching down almost anywhere on Earth. While early test plans at Johnston Atoll were paused in mid-2025 due to environmental concerns, the program itself has not been canceled. The Department of Defense continues to search for alternative test locations, with a demonstration flight now targeted for late fiscal year 2025 or sometime in 2026. The DOD has also explored the idea of operating Starship under a government-owned, government-operated model for sensitive or high-risk missions, including support for cislunar operations and broader national security objectives. According to Hegseth, the ultimate goal is to restore the United States as the global leader in artificial intelligence, 
all in service of building what he calls the nation's 21st century fighting force. If you talk to Elon Musk long enough, he will tell you how important hypersonics and long-range drones are, and he's 100% correct. So it's not hard to see why this visit to Starbase may have been more than just a tour. It could very well be a step toward deeper cooperation and the early groundwork for a dedicated, defense-focused version of Starship. In addition, Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth has officially announced that Grok, the AI chatbot developed by Elon Musk through XAI, will be integrated into the U.S. Department of Defense network, operating alongside Google's AI systems, such as Gemini, across both unclassified and classified environments. Hegseth emphasized that Grok will go live as early as this month, and that it will be given access to all relevant data from military IT systems and intelligence databases. The goal, he said, is to turn the U.S. military into an AI-first warfighting force. He also made it clear that the Pentagon's AI will be not woke, prioritizing real combat effectiveness and operational risk-taking over ideology. This move is strategically massive for SpaceX. It further cements the company's position as a top-tier defense partner, on top of the billions of dollars it already earns from DoD contracts through satellite launches and military Starlink services. It also opens the door for access to large-scale military data, which could help train and refine AI systems that optimize rocket launches, analyze real-time Starlink data, or even support the development of Starship for defense, lunar, and Mars missions. At the same time, having XAI and Grok, chosen by the Pentagon, significantly boosts the value of Elon Musk's entire ecosystem. It attracts more investment, strengthens public-private cooperation, and creates long-term competitive advantages over traditional rivals like ChatGPT or Gemini. In short, for SpaceX, this visit to Starbase wasn't just symbolic, it was like striking gold.